Okay, so you think we should start? I think so. So, okay, so it's a pleasure to have here two, two speakers for today, Anna Bogomolnaya and Jean-François Lallier. So I guess most of people are familiar with the Comsoc Video Seminar. So we will have a 20 minute talk by each speaker. And uh, during the talk, you can type your question in the chat so that after each talk, we'll have a five, 10 minute question and answer session. And uh, usually you put your question in the chat um, and we answer these questions. Um, after that, we'll have a break, a virtual coffee break where Dominic will put it in virtual coffee break rooms. You are free mm -hmm. to attend or not. And then we will go for the second speaker who will be Jean-Francois Lally. So I guess everybody is here now. So the first speaker is Anna Bogomolnaya, which is currently in Glasgow and CNRS, I guess. And, yeah. uh, and she will speak, she will present a joint paper with Hervé Moulin on guarantees in fair division. So Anna, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So let me start. Uh, okay, um, I still mess up with, okay, so I'm good, right? Okay, uh, so um, this is a paper uh, where we change the, the narrative, we change the results, and we change the author several times over the last half a year. <laughs> Uh, so current uh, set of the authors is just me and Hervé, but uh, it fluctuated a lot, uh, and you will see uh, why, and it's just a, a part of the story because, uh, you know, I counted what I can nicely tell in 20 minutes, uh, and I chopped off a uh, part of the story. Okay, so it's called Guarantees in Fair Division, uh, so what do we have? Oops, come on. Uh, give me a sec. Uh, oops. Yeah. So we are considering a very standard fair division model, like you know, cake division type uh, story. Uh, it will be uh, so there is a manna uh, stuff to divide. It's non-atomic. Okay, uh, so it's not really indivisible goods, it's a nice divisible cake where there are no uh, big concentrations of a lot of stuff in a tiny spots, uh, right? So that's the idea, right? So there are N agents, uh, which don't have any exogenous to the model rights, uh, uh, um, which have to divide uh, a manna. Um, and uh, those agents can have essentially arbitrary utilities as long as they are non-atomic. Uh, by arbitrary, I mean that they don't need to be additive. Okay, um, they could be super additive, sub additive, or you know, var vary depending on uh, where, in what corner of the cake you go. And also, they don't need to be non-negative or monotone. Right, so you can hate some parts of the cake, you can love some part of the cake, and I can hate something while you love that something. Okay, this come utilities are very arbitrary, except that um, uh, they don't have atoms in them, okay? So uh, we, can, we try to uh, do it in a full generality, I mean, as much as we could. So the current uh, full, uh, most general model with which we can deal is that uh, omega is a, a bounded and measurable subset of Rn, okay? So finite dimensional Euclidean space. Um, and then a potential shares for the agents could be uh, uh, arbitrary uh, measurable subsets of omega. So we have a kind of benchmark measure, which is a Lebesgue measure, but uh, this measure has nothing to do with uh, agents' utilities. It's just a, a kind of background uh, reference. So uh, now what we want, we want to partition this omega between agents. So we are looking for um, division, which is a partition of omega into n shares. Okay. Um, and then um, uh, what we will do, we will define utilities. So uh, utilities are arbitrary uh, real valued functions uh, on uh, the set of all uh, Lebesgue measurable uh, subsets of omega. Uh, so it's, uh, it's kind of a measure, right? But it's not, not necessarily positive and not necessarily additive measure. So it's, uh, okay. Uh, this just two conditions. Uh, so one condition is that utility of empty set is zero. And another condition is that utility is continuous 
uh, with respect to the uh, pseudometric of symmetric difference, right? So if if two subsets uh, have a large symmetric difference, uh, then uh, sorry, if they have small symmetric difference, then my utility of those two subsets uh, is uh, similar. Okay, so that's uh, where non-atomic is, right? So we want, so everybody has a, a continuous utility, uh, uh, and um, and uh, non-atomicity uh, non is uh, is there. Okay, so that's uh, so that's the most general uh, model with which we work. So now the question is, uh, what should we, uh, what can we do about it? You know, what what is the issue here? So what we want, we want to look at, uh, uh, of course, some fairness notions here, namely what would be a fair division, right? So and particularly now it's a, it's a very general story. So there are many uh, notions of fairness which don't exactly apply to this story. So what can we do? Okay, so um, traditional, uh, in traditional, more uh, much more restricted literature, uh, for example, in classical Ardo de Bre model, uh, in uh, or in uh, 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 we can talk about we can talk about a no MV and we can talk about a guarantee that everybody gets uh, at least uh, one nth of the whole pie, right? And both those things are not good here. They they are completely meaningless, right? In, in more general case, so uh, uh, it's not clear. So uh, we can uh, actually look at the example if I have it. Um, so uh, it's e easy to see that even with uh, two agents with identical preferences uh, over the interval, which are single dip, namely, uh, you know, there is an interval to divide, which is interval zero, one, and agents have preferences over quantity, which are single dip, namely the utility of nothing is zero, the utility of uh, one unit is probably uh, one or one half, and, uh, but uh, the utility of um, one half of the unit is negative, right? It's a story when you walk, 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 but only if you walk more than half of the time, you actually start being paid. Uh, so in that case, uh, there uh, it's already a very simple story. But in that case, you already run into uh, a lot of uh, a lot of trouble uh, with, uh, with the standard ideas of what could be uh, good guarantees, uh, what be, uh, could be good fairness notions, uh, and it will not work. Okay, so. Uh, so what are we looking at uh, in this uh, setting? We try to propose uh, um, to find uh, some alternative, which is a minimal guarantee or worst case guarantee. So what is minimal guarantee for an individual? Well, uh, the minimal guarantee for an individual is the lowest utility I can get uh, given a uh, lowest total utility level I can get in a partition, uh, given uh, that I uh, know my utility, but of course I don't know utility of others, right? So it's a really worst case scenario. So uh, a, a rule uh, tells me uh, for my utility and utility of others uh, uh, what shares I can get. So and the worst possible share for me is my minimal guarantee. So it only depends on my utility function, and of course, on big parameters of the model, namely on uh, set omega to divide and a uh, number of people. Okay, so it's a basic, basic uh, thing. So it's, uh, of course, it's a, um, a very, very uh, coarse thing. It's not, uh, no, it, it will not be very good, but uh, at least it's something. So we are looking for uh, those guarantees. We are trying to figure out uh, what could they be. Okay, uh, we assume anonymity. So we will be looking for only anonymous guarantees uh, where, uh, uh, so everybody is, um, will be getting the same guarantee. So it doesn't depend on the person. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so, uh, so, interesting questions which we are trying to look at are, for example, uh, what guarantee functions are feasible guarantees, right? So, what can we get in this? What can we really get in worst case scenario? 
Also, uh, we could look at what is the best guarantees. Uh, we can look at um, uh, whether we can actually compute them in a reasonable time, you know, are they easy to find? Uh, um, so uh, which feasible guarantees are maximal? Uh, but about that, I, I will not be talking here today. Okay. Uh, so I will be just talking about one guarantee and how to reach it. Okay. So let's... Uh, think um, uh, about the following things. So uh, I will be concentrating on uh, maximin and minimax guarantee. What is maximin and minimax? Well, um, it's very simple. Uh, minimax is that we look for all possible partitions. Remember, we are looking at the story from the point of view of one single agent, me or you, right? Uh, because we don't know what happens with other people and for worst case scenario. So we are looking for all possible partitions. In that um, possible partition, I figure out what is my worst piece, okay? And then uh, I take a maximum of all possibilities. So uh, it's uh, essentially as if uh, I am allowed to choose a partition, but then uh, some other people grab pieces and I remain with probably the worst, right? In worst case scenario, I remain with worst of them. So that's max mean. Uh, now, uh, an alternative story is uh, min-max, and min-max is uh, when actually uh, in each partition I calculate the best possible share for me, but then we look for the worst possible partition. So this is the opposite story. When somebody else chooses a partition for me, and then uh, given this partition, I am allowed to pick up the piece. Okay. So, um, okay, um, uh, so... What can we uh, tell about uh, those two uh, those two partitions? Well, first thing is that uh, max mean is really uh, the upper bound on all guarantee. We cannot provide more than uh, max mean to everybody. Okay, so. Uh, that's uh, that's really the uh, absolute upper bound. But uh, it's very often is um, uh, not reachable. Okay, uh, as we will see. So um, now, uh, what is uh, so? But on the other hand, if maximin is reachable, then it is the maximal guarantee. It's the best one because we cannot do anything else. Okay. So okay, uh, let's uh, think about them. So again, maximin and minimax. Uh, there is an interesting a uh, flip when we move from a discrete model to continuous model. In discrete model, about which I'm not going to talk, uh, actually, a uh, maximin is less or equal than minimax. Uh, and because maximin is always less or equal than one nth of my utility of the total uh, set of objects. Okay, so discrete model is when we have indivisible goods and additive preferences. And minimax is at least one nth of my utility of the total. Uh, on the other hand, in continuous model, well, these additive preferences, both those guarantees are equal and equal to one nth of my utility of the total object. Uh, but in uh, the ROG Brew model with uh, non-additive preferences, uh, uh, we actually uh, have an inverse inequality. Minimax is less or equal than my utility of one nth of the total mana, and uh, this is less or equal than maximum. So there is this inverse, uh, and our Aro Debra model is a subset of uh, our model. Uh, so I have uh, here even an example where I calculate maximin and minimax, but I probably will skip it because you know, that's not what I want to talk about. Okay. So, um, so as I told you, uh, we have a nice uh, situations uh, in uh, a traditional uh, ROG Bra model and also in, uh, in the um, traditional cake cutting with additive utilities uh, where maximin uh, exists uh, and it's, it's reachable and hence is the best guarantee. Okay, uh, so those are good ones, uh, but our model is more general. Uh, our model is more general, and then um, uh, so the result which we uh, which we will be getting is that uh, maximin, uh, is, as I told you, is not uh, not very often reachable, uh, at least uh, beyond those two examples which I've shown you on the previous slide. But uh, minimax we actually can always reach, provided uh, that there exists a net repartition. 
So an equipartition, uh, so given my utility and the set omega, uh, equipartition is a partition uh, of my set omega into n pieces, such that my utility of all those pieces is identical. As long as equipartition exists, uh, first we have a, a nice uh, fact that uh, minimax is actually uh, less or equal than my utility from each piece in this equipartition and maximin is uh, at least as large as my utility in this equipartition. Uh, so that's what, uh, that's one thing, and then uh, uh, we will see that uh, while maximin is not always feasible, uh, minimax is always feasible and can be reached nicely. So the, um, the lemma, uh, which is um, at some point we said that we proved it, uh, then it was, uh, we found out that we did not prove it. So it was uh, a long uh, up and down uh, in full generality uh, for preferences, not necessarily additive and not necessarily positive. It was just recently proved in our conversation there by uh, those two people, Raman Karasov and Sergei Avakumov, uh, uh, so this is a uh, very highly non-trivial uh, fact from algebraic topology. In our assumption, so in uh, this bounded measurable uh, set and um, utility being continuous in uh, uh, different pseudometric, there always exists equipartition in n pieces for any n. Okay, it's a, it's really a very very non-trivial fact. Okay, and it requires some uh, very advanced mathematical technique. So we will believe in that fact. Okay. So uh, we believe in that fact. Uh, and then, um, so what, uh, now I arrive to the uh, main result uh, of the story is that, well, uh, so minimax uh, utility is feasible, so we can do it. And uh, we also can uh, measure, uh, it's actually reached by quick algorithm. And this quick algorithm is actually, as we discovered after we invented that algorithm, is uh, actually uh, an uh, algorithm of Kuhn of uh, division, uh, n person generalization of traditional divide and choose. Okay. So let me explain you how this algorithm works. Okay. It's very simple. Uh, so we order people from one to n in arbitrary way. And then a uh, first person picks up an n partition of omega. And then every other agent reports uh, which shares are acceptable to him. Okay. So uh, presumably the person who divides uh, has all shares acceptable. Uh, now other people can have uh, uh, some acceptable shares. Uh, not all, uh, but at least one. Okay, uh, and then uh, what we do, uh, we are looking uh, to give some agents, not everybody, but to give some agents acceptable shares in such a way that um, that remaining people who don't get assigned shares, right? So some we assign to some people shares which they find acceptable. But people whom we don't assign shares, they believe that those shares which are assigned and, and will be gone, they are not interesting. They are unacceptable. Okay. So this, uh, uh, so if we can do it, assuming that we can do it, now we have a reduced problem. And in a reduced problem, there are some people who got shares assigned and they are left. And notice that everybody who remains believes that shares who are left, they are not very valuable shares. Okay, and then there are less people and then we repeat, namely we take the guy with the lowest uh, rank among remaining people, he divides if there are, uh, uh, I don't know, T people left, he divides uh, uh, the remaining pile into T pieces and then everybody else reports which parts of uh, they um, find acceptable and which parts they don't find acceptable. Okay, so uh, why is it that we can do it? Uh, well, uh, there is a, a, a graph theoretical lemma which just uh, comes uh, from Galayadman decomposition of the partite graph, which says that if we have uh, M, which is set of agents, and R is the set of objects of equal size, and then we draw the bipartite graph of likes, namely what agents like what shares, uh, and we, if we assume that each agent likes at least one share, and there is one agent, remember it's divided, who likes everything, 
then we always can find maximal set M star of agents such that we can assign to each of uh, those people an M star acceptable object. And the remaining people, people outside of M star, they don't like the objects which are assigned to M star. Okay, so this is always possible. Okay, so that's that lemma contrary to previous lemma is actually an easy one. Uh, relatively easy because it's a standard graph theoretical uh, fact. Okay, so uh, now returning to the results, so the algorithm actually works. Uh, so we uh, end up with a partition. And uh, the nice thing about this partition is that everybody in this partition actually gets minimax. Okay, um, except the first person who gets more than that. But first person can get maximum. Uh, because uh, the first person can choose uh, his maximal partition, his best partition, and then even if he gets the worst uh, outcome uh, in that, uh, he is happy. But of course, the prudent strategy which guarantees everybody uh, minimax, so first person just chooses the, the best partition uh, and gets max min, but everybody else is guaranteed minimax by the following rule. So whenever um, uh, you are asked to divide uh, the set into T object, uh, into T uh, uh, pieces, you divide in pieces of equal value. And whenever you are asked to say what objects are acceptable to you, you mark as acceptable at any stage all objects which at least as good as minimax. Notice that uh, objects at least as good as initial minimax when there were n people, right? So that's your benchmark. So you always at each stage of algorithm, you find that you announce as acceptable all, object, uh, all shares which are at least minimax. So if you do that, uh, at the end, you will get at least minimum. Okay, so uh, that's the story. Uh, so here is uh, the example. Uh, and um, okay. uh, so, um, so that's the nice story. So this again, so this is not algorithm which we invented. But uh, we notice that in this algorithm, you can get the minimax. Then we have further results uh, on um, different application and different roles for monotone preferences and other things. But since my 20 minutes are up, I think I will stop here. Thank you very much, Anna. Mm -hmm. We can applaud. Can you to um, So we no. did not get to, is there any question? Bill. Yes, uh, is there a nice characterization of when this equipartition exists or it the always sufficient exists. conditions that we guarantee? Okay, Equi equipartition always exists. That's the fact. You see, you need, you need the set to be measurable subset of measurable and bounded subset of final dimensional Euclidean space. And you need uh, your utility to be a continuous function is uh, in symmetric difference. And that's all you need. And then for any n, n every partition it is. But it's a very, I mean, at least for us, it proved to be unsurmountable. For uh, if u is monotone positive, even though non-additive, then it's not an issue. It's, uh, it's not trivial, but it's manageable. Uh, but in general, if preferences are non-additive and non-positive, uh, we, we will completely stuck beyond three uh, three objects. Uh, sorry, beyond three people. So when n is equal to three, we manage to do it with standard technique of orbits and uh, uh, you know those um, um, geometry of uh, um, shrinkable sets, uh, something which you can't shrink to uh, point and uh, uh, curves which you can't shrink to point and curves which you cannot. But beyond three, we could not. So we needed really al uh, algebra. Essentially, it's a technique of algebraic geometry in many dimensional space, which we really did not possess. So those people, they saved us. And they were not the first. We actually had another potential co-author who believed it, who proved it, but, uh, but then we found uh, uh, you know, a big hole. And uh, so it, it was a big, big deal this year. Yeah. Jean-Francois has a question. Yes, uh, such a partition exists, but uh, can you find it in practice? Uh, in practice, no, the, the, the proof, uh, as far as we understand it, right? So we, we had a difficulty to understand the proof. Um, uh, the proof is uh, not constructive. So in full generality, no, but of course, you know, in many special cases, yes. Even for three, 
Even for three, the proof which we were able to find, it's not constructive. Okay, is there any other question? Yes, can I ask a question? I don't know what it, what it is, but, we, but yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So, uh, do you believe that this it is hard uh, from a computational uh, complexity point of view to find to find such, such a partition? I think so. I is in full generality. I believe it will be computationally hard. But we have no idea how to find it in full generality, uh, because uh, you know if you have an arbitrary measure, uh, a, a pseudo measure, this u, uh, I believe it is computationally hard. Uh, first of all, you know, I don't even know how to approach the algorithm of finding it. My guess is that approximate, um, uh, you know, approximately fair partition might be not computationally hard to find, uh, up to epsilon for any epsilon. But uh, even that uh, we did not look at. But now I think there are plenty of sub problems with specific type of U or specific set of feasible partitions where it would be possible. Can you name one of these, uh, even even as a conjecture? No, uh, because we did not really look at uh, that problem specifically. Uh, I mean, there, there are known uh, known subsets, right? Because there are known subdomains. If you think about, for example, uh, the domain with positive additive uh, preferences, uh, right? So it's an algebra thing. Uh, uh, then it's not a problem at all, uh, I think, uh, but, you know, in general. Uh, what I know is, for example, we worked with the set of uh, preferences which are single dipped on a unit, right? So omega is unit zero, one, and utility only depends on the measure of the share. Uh, mm -hmm. And even there, I'm not sure that uh, equipartition, I, I cannot say now, but even there, uh, there are some difficulties to find it. I see. But Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, it's probably it's probably computable, but uh, we didn't really go very deep into that. Can I ask a follow up question on the same line? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, on the same line. Okay, yes. Uh, have you have you considered uh, something like you have two additive measures and the utility is the minimum of the two? This is a, no. a very simple no. failure of additivity, but in kind of a controlled way. Uh, no, we did not. We did not because uh, actually um, there is a literature already on non-additive preferences which are non-negative, okay, arbitrary and negative. So our interest was uh, more pushing toward uh, even, um, I mean, uh, even less non-additivity and more uh, uh, killing the condition of positivity, you know, like a mixture of good and bad stuff. So we were really in that frame of mind more. So that's why we didn't, we didn't consider that, uh, that thing of a minimum of two additive. And I don't have intuition about how it would work. Okay. Even in, in, even in a positive case. Okay, we have two more questions. So there was one question by Dominic and one question by Roit uh, Vaish. So I let first to Dominic. Oh, I was going to get another comment on the previous question that it's not clear to me how one would formulate the thing as a computational problem so you could reason about the complexity because you can't re encode the input. So that was my question. Sorry, uh, I didn't hear very well. I had some interference or something. Hello? No question. Okay. So, uh, Roit? Hi, yes, so I was wondering if it is uh, possible to achieve the fairness guarantees that you mentioned uh, when agents are assigned uh, connected pieces or convex shaped pieces. No, it's uh, actually, it does not matter. Even if you think, uh, uh, essentially we started from the story when, um, uh, when uh, omega is interval and people are, uh, interval zero one and people are assigned intervals. Already there you have a full, a full problem, full speed. And okay, already so there, if 
the partition lemma is uh, uh, is uh, uh, full uh, full fully problematic in terms of how to prove it. Okay, so I think uh, we should uh, stop this uh, this session, this first this first part of the session, and I will ask Dominic to send us to the virtual coffee break rooms. Dominic.